Namaskaram and good evening everyone. On behalf of the Indian Music Therapy Association, I am Dr. Vijay Lakshmi and I extend a warm and hearty welcome to all of you to the fourth webinar of the national webinar series organized by the Indian Music Therapy Association. May I request the president of the Indian Music Therapy Association, Dr. T.V. Sairam, to kindly welcome uh, the gathering. Uh, Dr. T.V. Sairam will be uh, giving his response to a question posted by Mr. Rangaswamy of Madurai. Mr. Rangaswamy wants to know the development process of vast Indian ragas from the three notes of Vedic chants. Over to you, Sairam, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vijayalakshmi. It's such a pleasure to be here before all of you to take on this uh, fourth national webinar. You are all most welcome. And we are all grateful for your sparing the most precious Sunday for us. And we, we are sincerely grateful and we welcome you all. Now the question has come that uh, actually how from Vedas the Raga started forming up in India. It's a beautiful question because it's about 6,000 year old experience of uh, Vedas which are going to be merged in forms of various notes, tones and semitones and quartertones. And then we are going to evolve a beautiful system of raga, ragas. So in this raga evolution, the most important part is those three tones about which I explained last time. The three tones of Vedas, namely Anudatha, Udatha, Svarita. This Anudatha is a note which gives some sort of small stress for people who listen to it. If you listen to it carefully, you will find that there is some sort of doubt is expressed, some sort of uh, indifference is expert, expressed, some sort of fear, some sort of uncertainty. All these are reflected in this note. I will just play this note so that you can feel those sensations. Anudatta, that is equivalent to Nishadam. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. frequency, this particular note is giving some sort of stress for the mind of the listeners. And then when we go for Udatha, 
the udata is a higher note and it is a very dominant note you will find out of those three notes the most dominant the king of notes here is udata and it is an hard stress which is shown here and it also pressurizes pressurizes the mind of the listeners you will find that it is more powerful than anudata now i am playing this this is a rishabham and i play this Oh mm. Now that means out of the three notes, you have three, two notes which is giving you some sort of teasing, which teases the listeners, either with small complaints or problems or stress or fear or uncertainty, or it tries to a bit of dominate and then you know questions you and all that. So these two notes are being responded by one note that we call swarita, which is an independent note which resolves these questions and which resolves these stresses short stress soft stress and hard stress both are being resolved by this you just observe how this uh, note sajjam resolves this mm. So suppose when a chant is done in these three notes, we take these three notes for making a small chant. So by repeatedly telling these slokas or Vedic chants and then you know repeating these three notes day and night, what is going to happen in your brain is that you are able to find a simulation of stress and its resolution constantly. By listening to this Vedic chants, your mind gets so much refreshed and the neurons are addressed as uh, uh, as Miss Nilofer is going to talk about today uh, about this aspect with certain scientific finding how these sort of tones affect the brain. So now coming to our development of evolution or development of the raga now these three notes we have already got with us that is nisari nisari is with us now what we are going to do is we are going to construct a scale in that scale what we are going to have is only five notes because it's an evolutionary process, minimum five notes are necessary for a raga. So we are going to play those five notes right now. Sani <laughs> Sa 
This is a beautiful ragam in Carnatic music. It is called Revati ragam. And in Hindustani, the equivalent ragam is Vairagib, Vairav. And this is a pentatonic scale, as I said, five tones are there. And one beautiful song in this, I am recollecting. It's something like that. Janani, 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 Jagatkarani, Purani, Narani, Janani, Janani, Janani. Jagatkarani Purani Narani Janani 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 Gana Vinodini Gana Vinodini Kamakshi Gana Vinodini Kamachi Kamalat Tirupadame Panindain Anudiname Kamalat Tirupadame Panindain Anudiname Paramaru Janani 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 Jagatkarani Purani Narani Janani 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 Jagatkarani Purani Narani Janani So with five tones we have made a pentatonic Revati Ragam. Now the same way with we use instead of the Komal Risham we use Komal Ganda. That's the only change we make in the octave. And then we try to sort of formulate a raga. This will sound with the So this rag with the seven notes is called Karaharapriya or Harapriya. It's known as Harapriya then because of certain grammatical interpretation, then it has to be made as Karaharapriya. So it's something like Karaharapriya. <coughs> so this is known as coffee thought. We know in South India, the South Indian coffee everybody likes and everybody drinks. Similarly, this North Indian coffee is also favorite among North Indians because both this coffee gives such a stimulation to the minds of the drinkers as well as the listeners that they are very favorite. So the basic thing in Karahar Priya is that there are two Komal Swaras as a told you there is there is a two komal for us the ga is taken komal ga i sound it now so you find a complaint there then you have another swara nishad ni that is also komal that is also a sort of complaining tones. Both these tones are complaining tones. So these tones are used with Shadjam. It's a resolving tone, resolving tone. So when anyone sings this seven swaras with its 
experimentation and combination, then their brain gets frequently agitated with tension, relaxation, tension, relaxation, tension, relaxation, or resolution, whatever you call it. So there is another aspect in this raga is there are there is one vadiswara and one samvadiswara. Vadiswara is pancham, like it sounds like this. Now you see pancham how it sounds. It is like a plaintiff. It is giving a complaint. The samvadiswara is very sort of um, submissive and it doesn't want to enter into any quarrel zone so it accepts and it resolves because you know it's resolved also it's not just accepting the situation but it is able to resolve you just listen how it resolves <laughs> So this is a beautifully uh, the the evolution has taken place from three swaras to five, five to seven, and many many raga possibilities and uh, are there because of this uh, seventy-two melakarta uh, sort of scheme which has developed in Karnataka raga. I would love to sing a small piece of uh, a film song which was. Uh, very old, I think it is 1957, Jal or something. Jal is the name of the film. So it starts something like this. Chand nirate pyar ki baate kho gai jane kaha Starts like, it doesn't start, it is Anupallari actually. Chand nira te pyar ki baate kho gai jane kaha Ye rat ye chand ni fir kaha Sun ja dil ki das taan Sun ja dil ki das taan ये रात ये चांदनी फिर कहाँ सुन जा जल की दास्तां सुन जा दिल की दास्तां This is just a sort of small exemplification of these three different aspects of music, and I am looking forward to more questions from the public. So that we can address in the future webinars. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sairam sir, for uh, beautifully explaining uh, the uh, evolution of uh, ragas from the three Vedic chants. Uh, with that, we proceed with uh, today's uh, webinar presentations. Uh, may I in, uh, invite Nilufar Arshad to make her presentation? As she shares her screen, uh, I take pleasure in introducing Mrs. Nilufar Arshad uh, for today's uh, presentation. <laughs> 